Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Gibby Gutierrez, also known as Gibby Joe here on YouTube with another tutorial on After Effects. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to do what's called the tilt shift effect in After Effects. Now, the tilt shift is more of a photography thing, so that way you have a very sharp focal line right here and everything's blurred off because you're physically tilting the, the lens of the camera. And uh, so you get these really cool photographs, like the example that I have on the screen right now of the beautiful San Francisco Bridge being miniaturized into something very, very tiny, so tiny, so cute, everything's cute when it's miniature. Anyway, but um, when you apply this to footage, to moving footage, you can come up with some pretty neat effects. And here's what we're going to be doing in the tutorial today. I'm just going to let this play. Now, wasn't that awesome? We're going to be learning how to do all the elements in this video using some included footage that I have um, in the uh, help file that I've included. It's underneath. It's the link to it is in the information area of the video. So if you click on that, it's going to be on a Dropbox file. It's going to be great. You have all the stuff that I'm working with, including the sound. So let's go back to uh, what our final video is going to look like, and we'll scrub. We'll play it one more time. <laughs> And so this is what the tilt shift effect looks like when you apply it to footage instead of photography. And uh, there's a couple of elements that are happening in this, in the footage that's uh, making it look the way it does, because that's what we're going to figure out. So um, there's two major things. There's three major things what's happening. One is this footage, the original footage has been sped up considerably. Let's turn this music off and play this, loop this. Oops, I don't even know what that means. I said loop, 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 loop. Oh, it's some bizarre shortcut that they changed on me. So there's a couple of things that are happening in here. One is we've sped up the original footage to make it look all fast and zoomy. And uh, the other thing is we've added all this blur. Um, and then uh, there's we've created this focal shift right in the middle where everything is blurred out and looking cool. And then of course we added music, but that's uh, that's a little icing on the cake. So let's pause this. And before we get started in After Effects, let's go look at what's included with the help file. I have some footage that I've included and um, an example picture for inspiration, because I know that you guys are going to be going off getting your own footage and making incredible videos. But let's look at the, let's open up the original file as well. So let's mute this because it is a bit trafficy. Move this up, and when you hit play, so you can see the stark difference that this is. This is about a 30, 35 second clip with the footage looking really boring and real, so real, so realistic. It's like real life. Is this real life? Yes, it is, dental guy. Um, I don't know what obscure reference that was. Anyway, so this is quite boring. In fact, we're going to do the first process, which is going to speed this up, then add a bunch of blur and then mask out what we need to and it's going to look spanking awesome. So let's close this right now, but we'll keep our example movie open just in case. And let's hop into After Effects. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is import our original footage so we can speed it up. So let's go to, um, what I did was, I really don't want to explain this. If you want, if you're not very familiar with After Effects, I have another tutorial that you can learn all the basics and get up to speed with this. This isn't a very difficult tutorial couple of simple steps, but uh, I'm not going to be stopping to explain every little detail. So with that in mind, let's just get started. So let's import something. You can either Command I or right click into the field and then import. But we're going to go into this Tilt Shift tutorial folder and where I have my footage. Um, we're going to click on the original one and hit open. So it's sitting nice in our project folder. Um, now, there's a couple of things I want you to take note because um, we're going to speed this. We're going to speed up the footage right now. If you look closely, it says 29.9999 frames per second. And that's really 30 seconds. I mean, uh, 30 frames per second uh, for this clip, and you see it's about 36 frames. Uh, excuse me, 36 seconds long. And what we're going to tell app. There's a million ways to do this in After Effects. I'm just going to do the the fastest one that's easiest to do. Um, we're going to speed up this footage to about 90 frames per second, but it's going to be sitting at a 30 frames per second. Um, movie and it's a it's a little that's a little hard to wrap your head around but we're gonna do this so that way it's a little bit easier to digest so let's take our original footage that we have here and we're gonna dump it into a new composition by 
dragging it onto the composition button icon in the project window. And what it does is it creates a uh, composition with the original footage in here. Now there's a couple of uh, things that we're going to do. First we're going to turn off the noise because it runs into a synchronization problem. Uh, the second thing I want to check out is with our composition selected, let's go into the composition settings. And so right now, this composition that we're creating is going to be at 30 frames a second. See where it says 29.9. Let's uh, move this up to 30. It's going to be NTSC, so just fine. Um, this is our comp the current composition that we have, but what we're doing is speeding up the footage. So we'll just click OK and follow along for just a moment. And so our original footage is in this 30 frames per second composition. Now what we're going to do is interpret this footage. We're going to tell After Effects that this 30 frames a second is really going to be 90 frames a second, or in our case, we want it ultimately 150. And the way that we do that is we're going to have to interpret the footage in After Effects. So you right click onto your footage, which is, in this case is the original MP4, interpret footage in main, or you can use this bizarre shortcut that I've never used. I don't even know what this symbol means. What is that? Uh, nose Clover G. So if you Nose Clover G, uh, if you're on a Mac, or you just hit main. I don't know. Where was I going with that joke? Oh, so it's over here. So it brings up this interpret footage window. And there's all sorts of stuff that we're not really going to care about uh, at the moment. But right, we're going to concern ourselves right now with this second option, which is called frame rate. And use frame rate from file, which is 29.9. But we want, no, we don't want that. Um, we want this to actually go up to 150. Now, the reason we can't go up to 150 is because After Effects, for whatever bizarre reason, has a limit on what you can reinterpret this footage as. Even though we want 150 frames for the final output, it really, you when you go above 99, um, After Effects says that I won't be doing above 99. I'm going to stick at 99, and you're going to deal with it because I'm After Effects, and I'm owned by Adobe, and rawr. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happens, but not really. So um, in order to kind of step around this limit, actually, let's, let me show you exactly what happens. So if you type in 150, we want OK. Hey, what's up? That didn't really happen. Um, it stayed at 99 frames because it's silly. Let's, uh, let's undo that right quick. And then we'll interpret again, main. And this time we're going to go up to 100, excuse me, 90 frames a second. And uh, we're going to speed this up to 90 frames a second. So when you hit OK, the first thing you're going to notice is down in your composition that we started under original, your original footage looks shorter. You remember it was the entire length of this clip, now it's only 12 seconds. Um, what has happened, and let's change this to half, so that way we can show you in the RAM footage. Um, this clip is now 60% uh, faster. And let's let this RAM preview just a bit. Let's go to six seconds, and you can see what's happening with the traffic. And when you play it in real time, after doing a RAM preview, you can see that it's sped up. Um, it's not quite to speed as our example video. Our example video um, is actually running at 150 frames a second. You can see that right here. And in order to bypass that After Effects limit of 99 frames, we're going to do this again. Um, so what I've done is in the help file, I've included a 90 frames and a 150 frames per second, but we're going to render this out to 90 frames. So let's take our work area in this composition. And if you hold down shift while you're moving, it'll kind of snap to things and it's going to snap to this end of the clip. You can render this out and what you're going to, with the end results of this render is going to, you're going to end up with this 90 frames a second video right here. And so this is what the clip is rendered out at. I'm including this in the help files to save some time. But uh, it doesn't look that fast. You know, you can tell when the bicyclists come by, but not really all that much speed difference. Anyway, but we're going to fix that right about now. So let's get rid of this composition because we've, quote, rendered it out. Actually, I rendered it out for you, and you're welcome. I, you can send the GIFs to my PayPal account. So let's import the 90 frames a second video that we had. Bam. And we're going to do the same thing in order to speed this up again. We're going to take our 90 frames per second which rendered out at 30 frames a second because that's where our composition was dealing with that. So let's take this and we're going to drop this into a new composition like so. And so we have this 90 frames per second, 90 frames per second. And this is, remember our clip was only 12 seconds long. And this is what 90 frames a second looks like. It's amazing, but not fast enough. So we're going to cheat one more time. 
and we're going to speed this up another an additional um, uh, 60 excuse me 30 frames faster so we're going to do the same process we have this in our composition we're going to click on the 90 frames a second clip right click interpret footage and main and instead of going 90 because that would give us 180 frames we just want 60 to give us 150 and I think that's a pretty nice speed uh, you can play around with the speed if you want if you get it too fast it ends up looking like you know you're a mentally challenged chipmunk that's how fast it goes and so you would render this out again but because I'm so nice oh my gosh all this stuff for free I've given you 150 frames per second clip so that way you can play around with that and we're going to do that as well so let's close this we're gonna pretend that we rendered that out and we're gonna re-import our 150 frames per second and this is where the second half of the tutorial comes in so here is our 150 frames per second we sped up the original our original um, footage to 150 frames per second which is great okay now so this is where the other half comes in we're gonna create this blur mask using um, whoops where's quick time we're gonna create the blur mask using our sped up footage so the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, actually let's go back to our footage so I can explain some stuff so what's happening here is we've already sped up our footage and now we're gonna create some blurring effects so that way um, um, to kind of razor out this little sharpened area and then you see up top it's really really blurry then it gets a little blurry a little less blurry and then it's sharp and crisp where we can see everything and so what we're gonna do is kind of create like a sandwich of blur and then mask out the middle parts so that way it's less blurry uh, if that analogy made sense good for you if not it probably just made you hungry so let's take our 150 frames per second clip and we're gonna create a new composition in this one using this clip uh, let's save our files just in case. Save as. And this project will now be called Tilt Shift Tutorial. Just in case uh, After Effects decides to blow up. And I'm going to save it on my desktop so that I don't break anything. Um, dur, dur, dur. Actually, I'll save it in here. Tilt Shift Tutorial. Save. And so, in order for us not to get too confused, let's rename this composition as well. Um, let's name this because this is where we're going to start doing the tilt shift effect. Tilt shift, oops, effect. And we're going to leave all this the way it is. And so now we have 150 frames per second clip running in this composition. And there's a couple, in order to get this blur effect, we're going to have to blur it, of course. But before we go all crazy, let's uh, plan ahead and we're going to duplicate this a couple of times over. So that way we have the same friends. Let's turn off the first two layers. And so all we have is the base layer, which is going to be the very bottom part of our blur sandwich, or blur witch, if you will, with a little bit of things. What is this artifact? Anyway, um, so you have this first layer of blur, and it's going to be this outer edge and this bottom part, you know, the outer, the outer parts. And that's going to be really, really blurry. And then it gets a little less blurry and then super sharp. So let's make this really blurry. And we're not going to just use any sort of blur. We're going to actually go for as realistic as possible. And we're going to simulate a camera blur. So if you go into your effects and presets down over here and you search for a blur, you're going to have all sorts of blurs. And we don't care about any of these. We just want our very happy camera lens blur. And we're going to take this uh, effect that we've found and we're going to dump it onto our base layer of 150 frames per second in the tilt shift composition. So let's dump it on there and we blur it out. There's a, before we even get started on anything, let's make sure this is at full so that way we can really see what's going on. And uh, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on on the blur this repeat edge pixels. And what, what that does is it tells After Effects that anything beyond the edge of our footage can be blurred out. Uh, it just does it using magical math and I really don't know. How that works but uh, you just make sure that's turned on and it looks better which is good and so the second thing that we're going to screw around with is the blur radius on this camera lens blur um, 5.0 isn't strong enough if you look back at our example movie this is really blurry down here in fact it is 18.0 blurry because I that was some magic number that I made up so you can see that it's really really blurry now and uh, if you go through, you can really screw around with all the other stuff around here. We're not going to. Uh, I will point out that this little shape property is kind of neat to play around with. 
Fortunately enough, my camera, let's undo that right quick. In fact, let's hide this for a second. You can see this um, light flare that's happening from my, is hexagonal because that's the way my camera, it's a hexagon uh, shape. And so we're just gonna leave this at hexagon. Turn that back on. And uh, let's blur this back up to 18.0. And so this is going to be our base layer for blurring. So we have the one layer, second layer, third layer. And this is going to be our base blur. Now you're like, wow, that didn't really do anything. Thanks a lot, Gibby. This is a worthless tutorial. No, stick with me because it gets way better. So let's do, do me a favor. Let's click on the second layer. And you can see there's nothing on there. And what we're going to do to get this effect is we're going to blur it out just a bit less and then mask it off. So that way there's like this ramp into the gray, into the blur. So that way it's really blurry down here, and then not so blurry, and then super sharp. And we're going to do that by blurring this and also adding a mask to it, so that way the, uh, the other mask shows through when. So we're going to take the same blur that we had and dump it on the middle portion of the 150 frames per second. Bump, like that, and it's not as much. And this is good. This is exactly what we want. We're going to do the same thing, repeat edge pixels. And then up here, this blur radius, instead of it 5, let's have it be uh, 7. And you think that's not too much of a difference, but what we're gonna do next is the cool part. And you can see where this is gonna start constructing into that. So we're gonna mask off this top layer to show, we're, remember we're gonna show our focal point down here, but we wanna ramp a fall off of the blurriness of this project right happening right about here so that way it kind of bleeds in. So we're gonna take this mask tool, make sure it's a square for this particular one, and uh, we're going to mask off a portion so that way and if you're doing this if you're following along like you can really see what's going on with this mask it's kind of neat and you can see like it's super blurry then it's not as blurry and uh, what we're going to do if you click outside of it it'll get rid of the mask lines and there's an option or a toggle for it but I don't want to search for it or explain it right now so we're just going to ghetto it and click outside of that great so now we have two layers of masks we have this really blurry one and then this slightly less blurry one and uh, this already looks pretty good, but what we're going to do is feather this out a bit to make it just look a little bit better. So let's twirl down this menu, and there's going to be our masks. If you click on the one, mask one and twirl this down again, you're going to have this feather. And uh, if you shift around this feather, you can see that it kind of makes it bleed a bit better um, right at the edges of the mask. My The magic number that I've worked around with in this tutorial is about 15 pixels. So if you do 15 pixels, you'll get a nice little bleed. Let's uh, twirl this back up and click out of it so that way you can see the effect of it. So now we have our two major layers of blurring, which we have in our example movie. There's one up top, the outer one, and then this little hazy one in the middle. And the next thing that we're going to do is look at this spider that's crawling on my wall. Wow. Okay. I was just kidding about that. Uh, we're going to turn on this top layer, and this is going to be our ultra sharp place right here. So let's turn this on and we have, it's all sharp. But um, we're gonna mask off a portion of it just like we did with the previous one. And so that way all the other blur masks will show through. Um, let, for this one, if you look at our examples of footage that we have, in particular this particular one, in particular the San Francisco one, the tilt shift has a great shift up here and great shift down. But this focal area, because uh, the camera lens is generally round for the, the you know what I'm talking about, the little, the lens is round. And so the shift on it is actually kind of round. There's more of a roundiness to it versus this square one that we put in originally. But because we're working with footage, we have to kind of fake all this stuff. And so the rectangle was there just to create the ramp. And so for this particular mask, we're gonna use the ellipse tool. And we're gonna to want to center out about this area right here uh, in the middle. And so if you click around, I don't know, we can start it around here and draw out a mask. Um, let's move it out to about the edge right there. This is cool. We want this to be the focal point of our composition. So if you close that up, let's switch to our move tool, and then click out of it. You can see that it created a really sharp line uh, right there into our second layer of blurriness. So let's feather that out, and we're gonna do a couple of uh, quick hotkeys with that. With the layer selected, if you push M, it'll go to your masks. And with your mask selected, you push F, then it goes into your feather. And let's feather this out. Um, I think I found out that like maybe 12 is a good number. Am I just making that up? Uh, yeah, you can see right about here, it needs a little bit more. 
Let's crank it up to about 17 or 18. Let's do 17. For whatever reason, that sticks in my head. Let's click out of it right quick. Whoops. Click out of it. Uh, maybe just a bit more. Maybe like 20. Uh, we'll work with that. We're going to work with that. So that is for that out. And what you have right now is a pretty darn good tilt shift already. If you just hit ramp preview, um, it's going to take a while. I'm going to cut right here so that way it's not so long. Okay, we're back after that million year calculation. So let's do a ramp preview. And you can see that we already pretty much are, we're about 90% there uh, in terms of like the completion to the project. So let's switch back to our example movie. And if we hit play again, you can see like we're pretty much right on par. You can do some adjustments on the mask. Uh, I spent a lot more time on this um, than this quick tutorial did, but you get the you get the idea of what's going on. You can adjust the numbers if you want. But what we're going to do is make it even sexier. We want to reach at least this level of quality with it. And uh, we're just a little bit shy of doing that. So one thing that we're going to do is with this footage that we have up on top, this is supposed to be the really clear area, we're going to kind of fake it. We're going to make it even more clear. Um, we're going to make it ever clear like that, like that booze. Or isn't it a band? Ever clear? I don't know. So what we're going to do is sharpen this up a bit. And by a bit, I mean a lot. And so let's take our sharpen effect by searching for it. We can just type in sharpen. It'll be blur and sharpen. And we're going to dump it on top of our very top layer footage. So up here, it's done nothing because we haven't added to it. But you can screw around and crease this up and blow it out completely. So if you have 1,866, you will be very unsuccessful as a motion graphics artist because you don't have any clue of what you're doing. Uh, so let's bring this down to about, I don't know, 90, 90, 90. And if you click away from the mask, you can see that it's kind of sharpened up the detail. You can add a lot more by really doctoring this footage, but remember this is like a third generation uh, MP4 that I'm including with this just as an example. So it's not going to get super duper clear. You might be winning, wanting to work with higher quality footage um, that you will be taking yourself because you're all aspiring video artists. And yeah, but we're going to leave this at 90 for now. And that gives us enough contrast. It really makes these little details pop out. And that's kind of what we want. Um, but we're not, we're not quite done yet. We're not quite, you can call it a day with this again, you know, if you just do another quick RAM preview, and it previews a lot faster now that it's loaded the, the initial masks. Um, you know, this looks pretty good. It makes it, you have a pretty good miniature effect, a good tilt shift effect with your footage. But if we go look at our example, you can call it a day there, but our example goes a little bit further. And I'll point out the little details that make it even more. So one thing is I added an additional mask on top to blur out these tethers, uh, the the bus cables up here. And so they kind of bleed into the focal area, which makes it look cool. And the other thing that I did was I blurred out this area of the tree. So that way when the traffic passes through it, it actually goes into further blur. And so that way our, focals, our focus is right here. And we can do that by adjusting, first off, the elliptical mask that we put on to kind of like nudge it out right there. And the other thing that we're going to do is mask off these wires and also mask off this tree and give it a different level of blur. So that way it looks a little bit more believable. And uh, yeah, so let's do that right now. It's actually quite a simple task. So what we're going to go back into our project, we're going to drop another copy of the 150 frames on top of our middle layer. So this sitting on top. And let's work on uh, this tree first. It's uh, not that big of a daunting task. But uh, what we're going to do is mask it out again. And instead of using like a shape, one, I mean, uh, these designated shapes for you, like the star, oh, that'd be great. No, it wouldn't be terrible. We're going to use the pen tool. The pen tool will generate a mask that you have a lot more control over um, in terms of the shape. And because this is a really weird organic shape, we're going to need our pen tool. So let's click our pen tool. And uh, we're going to draw a mask that encompasses this little... I know that they're in different planes, but for this video purpose, it's kind of easy just to fake it in with this tree. So let's mask off this tree and the pole that it accompanies it. You don't have to be super detailed because we are going to do that feathering process again with it, but you do want to kind of generally follow the shape of the tree because uh, the feathering doesn't cover everything. It's good. It's great. It's great around here. And then let's... Uh, Let's move this out of the way. Oops, I don't like that one. Do it here. Whoops. 
Der, der, der. So now our tree is masked off. And if you click away from that, it looks like crap because it, we haven't faded it into the background or anything. So the first thing that we're going to do is blur it so that way it reaches its own blur. So that way it has its own blur that we can mask out. Blur, search for that again in a camera lens blur. Dump that on there right quick. And five, five actually might work. Uh, let's look at that. That's pretty close. Let's, let's bring it down a bit, just a bit more to about four. I know it's nitpicky, but you know what? It's going to sell it a lot better. And the other thing that we're going to do to make it better is let's troll down. Let's put M for mask and then we'll feather out our mask of it. Um, we don't want it too great. You can see what happens around there. Let's do about nine. See what that looks like. What does that look like? Let me shrink you a bit. Um, let's go a little bit more. We want a little bit more easier transition. 20 is a bit much. You're, let's do 16. 16 looks good enough. Good enough for me. Good enough for right now. Um, so as And so when you scrub through this, you'll see that these cars kind of go from and they change depth of field which is cool and it makes you know brings out a little bit more detail um one thing that we're gonna have to make it see where this little leaf is kind of fixing out there it's really easy to adjust these masks so uh with your move tool selected up in the upper left by hitting v you can change these points on the mask by holding down control or i mean excuse me uh with the mask selected you can uh, it brings up this little selection tool that's white with a little thing with a little extra box you can actually change and adjust oops, the uh, the points individually by holding down option or or alt I think on a PC and just grabbing the the points where you want ah, did it again so you're gonna <laughs> alt or yeah I believe it's alt on Windows alt or option uh, highlight and Mac and then you're going to take these points, let go of it, and then adjust them individually. So, you know, that way you can get this nice detailed mask in here and make any adjustments that you needed to to the mask. But I think that's just it. There's just more of an example anyway. So now when you get to the point where these buses and stuff pass through there, you know, this tree is a bit more blurred out. Actually, we could probably make it a bit better. I don't know why I'm doing this right now, but I just felt like it. So now <laughs> the bus clearly goes under the tree and into a different depth zone. Especially if you ramp preview it, it looks a lot better. And uh, we're going to do the same process with these lines over here. So here's our ramp preview. And you can see that that looks a whole lot better. You know, these sharper cars are now going behind this mask, this blur mask here. I can probably blur out that leaf, but I don't feel like it right now. And we're going to do the same thing to these uh, lines right here. So let's go back into our project and we're going to dump this 150 frames on top again. So we cleared it out, but now we're just going to mask out uh, these lines using the same principle with the pen tool. And um, I, I was doing this as an, earlier, and I think the best example isn't to to go crazy and try and zoom in and get these four pixels in one mask because we're going to be blurring it. I mean, we're going to be feathering it out. You don't have to worry about that much detail. So if we kind of start out here and make this M shape, let's go to about here. You'll see how successful it is and kind of encompass it in the middle and then back again at this point going back over here and so this mask is a lot simpler and uh, you can already see where it's blurred out but let's uh, let's dump on this blur whoops let's dump on this blur on top of our feathered ones let's see it at five that's a pretty good one you can see where the effect you know is really believable we didn't have to feather it out that much but you can if you'd like to um, if you do I wouldn't go too crazy. I only do like, I don't know, maybe five pixels. Um, and that's pretty good. That's uh, because it's going to look natural and they do sway in the wind a bit, but it still looks kind of cool. And so, you know what? You're, you're pretty much there. You pretty much have, we have the video that we created almost verbatim. So once you ram preview that, you can see that. And let's go look at our example video again. I was working with a lot cleaner footage. I didn't, uh, I was working with the original files that I had and they're kind of a bit higher quality so there's a little less pixelization but you can see where we we've nailed all the details where we blurred out this tree uh, we added an extra blur to the tether lines and these go from a from a larger blur to a sharpened area you sped up the footage and it looks really successful and there is your way of doing a miniature effect 
and you can always change this, add different footage, but one of the things you want to look for in your footage is, you know, that you have a good distance shot, so that way everything looks tiny. It looks really fun in crowds if you have a, an opportunity to do that. And the video prior to this on my account, you can look at some other examples of the tilt shift that I did using the same techniques. And uh, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think it's a really, really cool effect. Uh, one of my favorite to do, and it's a lot easier to do than you think. So let's turn this back up and enjoy that music, which I've also included in the information. And thanks for watching. See you later, guys.